Hi there everyone, this video is a build guide for the AOS 7 V5. This is a 7 inch FPV frame for long range or 7 inch freestyle and you can find links to where you can pick up the frame kit as well as all kinds of resources like 3D prints and tuning guides down in the video description. This frame is incredibly easy to build but it never hurts to have a few tips or tricks to help along the way so I'm going to take you through the whole frame build and give you my recommended method for putting it together. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. We're going to start by assembling the camera cage and both camera cage parts are identical, they're symmetric, there's no left or right side. Start by setting the camera cages up back to back like this. That makes sure that you're going to attach the uh, carbon fiber plates to the right side of each of the camera cages. If you're going to build for a soft mount or an O3 camera, you're going to want to use the um, soft mount camera plate which has a larger hole and if you're wanting to hard mount a camera you're going to stack the hard mount plate on top of the soft mount plate and that's going to give you a 19 millimeter hard mount for a standard FPV camera. Depending on whether you're using one plate or both plates you're going to want to use either the M2 by 4 millimeter countersunk screws or the M2 by 6 mm countersunk screws for the hard mount option. I'm going to be building for the DJI 03 camera, so I'm going to be using the soft mount camera plates and the M2 by 4 mm countersunk screws. So once you have this lined up, go ahead and screw in the carbon fiber plates. The camera cage is aluminium. And even though it's a 7000 series aluminium, so it's very hard, you don't want to strip the screws out. So make sure that you're tightening the screws quite gently, not putting too much torque on them. These are only very tiny little M2 screws. Just do them up with a couple of fingers and you can see I'm holding the shaft of the screwdriver so that I can't apply too much torque. Once you have all of the camera plates assembled, Obviously, if you're using the hard mount option, you can stack. The next thing you're going to want to do is just fit the soft mount pieces. Your frame kit will come with these silicone soft mounts, and these are designed for O3 or uh, walks now avatar cameras that require soft mounting. If you're using O3, you're going to pop them in like this with the two slots forward in both cases. And if you're using them for the old style DJI camera with the V1 air unit, you're going to want to spin them around and have the two slots towards the rear. You'll figure this out for whatever camera you have and there are loads of different mounting options here with the single slot and the double slots. Just arrange them as you like. You can also, if you want a harder or a firmer soft mount, you can also use these TPU gummies. Um, STL files for these are available um, in the links in the video description. Once we've assembled the camera cage, it's time to put the arms together. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna first take the main plate and work out which side has the press nuts on it. The side with the press nuts needs to face down against the desk, and then we can assemble the arms on top of this plate. To assemble the arms, you're gonna find the two different types of arm. So you'll have a type that ends with a sort of curve and then this square shape at the bottom and you'll have a type with a, a more rounded uh, end. These are the two different struts and they just lock together like that. Once you've got them locked together you're going to have the arms arranged like this so the circular end is at the front and the rear of the frame and the curved end with the square section is at the, uh, the middle. Once you have all the arms correctly placed like this we can go ahead and put the brace plates on top and then we're going to secure them with our screws. So the center brace goes in the middle and then you'll have two braces for the front and the rear of the frame. Once you have all the carbon parts positioned correctly you can go ahead and secure them together using eight M3 by 20 millimeter countersunk screws. You're going to want to pass the screw through the brace plate, through the arm, and then down into the press nut, and just do it up finger tight just to secure it in place. If you do that for all of the screws, that will have the whole frame secured nicely together, and then we can tighten them up. 
Once you've tapped all the screws in just finger tight, you can then use a driver and secure them nice and tightly. Because the all the mountings are reinforced with M3 press nuts, you're gonna be able to tighten these arms down nice and tightly and get the frame really secure at this stage. Don't worry if the arms move around a little bit, they can kind of come apart and go together. That's obviously all gonna be secured when you attach your motors, but for now, we just need to make sure all the screws on this main plate are reasonably tight, and of course, we can always give them a final tighten after we've installed the motors. Next, we're gonna install the two camera cage pieces. You're gonna to want to set them at the front of the frame and make sure that the carbon fiber plates are facing inwards. So the two carbon fiber plates that you installed earlier should be facing towards each other. And once you've got them in the correct orientation, you're gonna install them using four M3 by six millimeter button head screws. Once the camera cage and the arms are all installed, this is the perfect time to build out the, all the electronics, your stack, your VTX camera, all of that stuff. You can build it all with the frame in this configuration. When you're installing the motors, you are going to want to use the motor brace plates underneath the arms. So these little motor braces go underneath each arm and then you pass your motor screw up through that brace plate and then up into the motor. And you need quite long motor screws for this, so the cap head motor screws are provided with the frame. You're going to use four of those little brace plates to make sure that the uh, the arms are really, really securely fastened together once your motors are installed. This build guide is focusing mainly on the frame, but in terms of component placement, I would place your VTX or air unit up front, your electronic stack in the middle, and leave the rear bay free for capacitors, your receiver, a buzzer or beeper, a spike absorber, and maybe a spark suppressor like this, and run your XT60 rearwards out of the back of the frame. Once all the electronics is assembled, it's time to close the frame up. And for that, we're just gonna use the M3 by 20 millimeter standoffs and screw them down onto the arm screws that are protruding out of the press nuts. And you can just do those up finger tight, I find. You don't need to do them up tightly because the press nut stops the screw from backing out. Once all the standoffs are in place, you can put the top plate on. The top plate is secured by four M3 by eight millimeter button head screws and six M3 by six millimeter countersunk screws. So you can just go ahead and install all of those and that closes up the top plate. Once you've got the top plate buttoned up, the last thing you need to do is install the camera standoff. And this is just an M2 by 23 millimeter standoff, which you secure with two M2 by 10 button head screws. And with that, your AOS 7 V5 is complete. Don't forget, you can find extra resources for your AOS 7 V5 build at the links down in the video description, including 3D prints and tuning guides. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.